That's this one. Okay. Footage uh, your device. What is this? Is it right? Yeah, okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is our second Eid. As we made it another takbir uh, today, this afternoon, because in this room there's more than 400 years of experience in humanitarian and social work. And we are celebrating these experiences and this length of time together. And from the time actually of the 80s and 90s till the third millennium. And I will start with talking to the people who still have the great values and the principles of the work that we are doing. And one of them to start with is Abdul Jabbar. Uh, you say something? Yes, sir. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> uh, I am very happy to meet my old friend. They bring uh, memory, my to my memory, memory, the sweet olden days. Mosley Road, the street. Uh, <laughs> The other office in uh, Bismillah Bismillah And uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, I'm happy to see everyone here, uh, especially Abdurrahman. You know Abdurrahman? Of course, Abdurrahman. He is the first. As uh, my my start with me, but no one knows. Mm. No 1991. One knows. He start with me. He used to come from Warsaw in his uh, school holiday. To help me in Mosley Road. 1991. 1991. Every, I was, when is uh, school holiday, I am happy is coming to help me. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> the second one is Jila. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Many, many years have gone to come and go with these wonderful people. They're not only humans, they are angels. They, they have been doing such a wonderful work, mashallah, for the needies. That many years ago, when the especially doctor managed to do the speeches, nobody could ever think that it's going to grow a huge monster. Mashallah, alhamdulillah, with help of these wonderful brothers, they are very special brothers. They made this organization come to this, basically, and all over the world, alhamdulillah, they managed to reach. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make their dunya and akhirah number one. And the thing is, it's never enough. Whenever you find time or feel good, you just have to be with them and see whatever you can contribute toward it, even if it's your half an hour, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, Allah may accept it. Amen. 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 Third one was the good old days is uh, His Excellency, the barrister or the lawyer, Abdurrahman Varache. Come forward. Come sit down here. Okay. Because we're talking about history, not about... Uh, Hi, Rak. Okay, we can look. I think one of the first times I met Dr. Hani uh, was in a masjid. And I, can sort of, I can't remember where it was. It was either Dudley or, or Walsall. And I can still remember one of the speeches he made and what he shared with the audience. But the moment you take Shahada, that your life will always be one of difficulty. And that's resonated with me throughout all my life. And I think it will probably resonate with most of us in terms of the challenges and the difficulties that Islamic Relief has faced. And they have been very, very serious challenges. But Alhamdulillah, nothing has stopped the mission. Nothing has stopped the cause. And we've grown after every challenge. We've multiplied. 
And inshallah, I think the sincerity of everybody has shone through. And Allah's protection has always been there. And I pray and I hope Allah's protection will always remain as long as those who work with the uh, charity and work with the organization remain sincere and true to its true mission and its vision that the founders set up, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Number uh, four is Ali Jin, because we're this generation. Okay. And. Uh, <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. What can I say? Um, alhamdulillah, it's, it's a great honor to be in this room amongst um, well-learned people, well-respected people. I came in as a 17-year-old. I um, failed all my GCSEs. You know, I went to Greenland Mosque. I seen an advert on it. It says, volunteers for the, the Bosnian <coughs> crisis. Uh, I caught the bus, went in there. The first person I met was Brother Siraj, alhamdulillah. Yeah. You know, uh, Brother Azad was there. <coughs> and uh, uh, obviously, Bali was there. Then an opportunity came off, alhamdulillah, to work in uh, fundraising. So I worked with Brother Jangir. And uh, Brother Anwar came in, alhamdulillah. In your flip-flops. Uh, in my flip-flops, do you know I mean? Um, those days were tough, kind of, you know, because... Baba was a bit ruthless. I remember one time. <laughs> always, always. Yeah. Still I remember, is. I, I remember <laughs> Baba came in one time yeah. from one of his trips. Jungi just reminded me, and uh, I was sitting here as I was on my right, and Jungi's on my left. It was the Islamic Relief Games in 1994, and he asked us, you know, how many teams, and we just said two, three. He says, oh, "Okay, all of you, pack your bags and go home." <laughs> <laughs> but Alhamdulillah, fast forward, you know, 30 years on, Alhamdulillah, those brothers are the students of Dr. Hani. You know, like we say, peas got married. You, you know, Dr. Hani has produced, you know, students, leaders. So you look around the room today, you, you'll see Nasruddin, Brother Jangir, Brother Yusuf Kusuji, Azra Ayub, you know, Anwar Khan, Alhamdulillah. They've learned from the best. And, you know, where, there's a, I don't know if it's the hadith or the saying that you're on the religion of your friends. You know, Alhamdulillah, you know, we've been, I've been blessed to work amongst the best, you know. Um, you know, I, I always do dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect Baba and we carry on learning Baba from inshallah. Yeah, Baba Ji, hear me? Uh, you know, I, I, I've met many people in my life. <laughs> Wallahi, I'm telling you. And I've seen many people on TV. But I've never ever met anyone like Baba. Alhamdulillah, I'm not, I'm just, I'm not just saying it. He's Baba. He's Baba, yeah. <laughs> but just, just recently, there was the opening of the dar. And in the dar, yeah, they were talking about building the mezzanine, you know, second floor. Yeah, yeah. In the 1990s, and I think Abdullah Saif came across a, a plan. And he says, Alhamdulillah, we've completed it in 2022. <laughs> but Dr. Hani had this vision to do the mezzanine in the 1990s. <laughs> and I remember when they bought Ree Street, a lot of people were saying, you know, why has he bought this big building for? Yes. You know, Aisha has a mahaz of the Jubba. Yummy. But you know, fast forward, Alhamdulillah. Yeah, everyone criticized. Yeah, everyone criticized. Yeah, but Alhamdulillah, you know, uh, it's our grown uh, space kind of thing. So, inshallah, I do dua and uh, you know, Allah keep us for the next 20 30 years, inshallah. Ta'ala. Only and, more, than uh, more than that, inshallah. Ta'ala, <laughs> yummy. And uh, we should keep in contact, you know. So, I mean, I haven't seen some of the brothers for a very long time. Do you hear me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows if I'm going to be here next year or he's going to be here next yeah. year. So many people are gone, do you know what I mean? One day it's going to be Ali Din, you know, Rahimullah, Yusuf Kuzuzu, Rahimullah. Mm. You see, Salah Abul Qasim, Allah, Maybe he's 20, 30 years ahead. But, you know, yeah. Khalas, inshallah. Next person, please, Akhi Barakabha. Let us live for a few more years. Inshallah. I'm done now, really. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, eight, number eight, uh, Ali Din, in the early 90s, there were two people who made America click. Made America click. Jangir, Malik, and Anwar Khan. And because Anwar Khan is coming here, no, no, Wasim will be the icing and the cherry on the cake at the end. His baby. Who's? Who? Sultan? Azar. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. He's hiding. I'm, I'm not. Come on, Azar. 
Ali Din. Come on. Sorry, I forget this uh, big uh, mafia gangster. <laughs> His name is Azar Ayub, and he's from the. Yeah, sit down, sit down here. Before Jangir and before uh, Anwar, and uh, and. Haitians, uh, Haitians. Yeah, that's the right word. Bismillah. Bismillah. No. Zakhla Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I just want to add something to what Ali says. Uh, amongst us, Dr. Hani is known as the Godfather. So if you ever want to know what the, his nickname is, Godfather. But with Islam Cliff, uh, I've been since with Islam Cliff since 91 when, when Mozart, me and other Dubai used to work in the office. Then we took a, a, an office upstairs, moved to Bismillah building, moved to Ray Street, then Lambert Street, Alhamdulillah. It's been an absolutely amazing journey, an eye-opener, um, very educational, amazingly, uh, amazing journey. Um, I don't know what to say, I'm really speechless and I'm thankful. Dr. Hani and the brothers who work with Dr. Hani for bringing me up, I hope in the right way because uh, it has it has matured me working with Islam. Thank still, you. We're still maturing. We're still maturing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I think uh, Abdul Manan is 93. 92. 92. 93. 92 or 93? 93 or 92? 93. 93. No, you, you people are the same time. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Dr. Hani once asked during his one of his visits to Pakistan, Dr. Hani, where do you see Islamic Leaf in next 10 years' time? <coughs> He started crying and he said, we were planning and praying, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the success in next 10 year time to be the you know, large scale of Muslim charity in the West or in the world or something. But beyond our means and imitations, and expectations, Allah give us the success in just two or three years' time where we are looking for the next 10 years' time. This is my 31st year with Islamic Leaf. <clears throat> I personally saw miracles. Allah's help came, as I said, beyond, beyond our expectations and means. I just share one story and then and finish my uh, talk. In 2000, mid 2000, there was a uh, drought in Balochistan, in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And that time we had just one office in Islamabad and one vehicle we have at that time. And uh, headquarters allocated $20,000 to go and help the uh, drought affected people. We decided to take the car and go by road rather than take the flight. It will be maybe take maybe one third of one uh, or quarter maybe the money they will just for flight uh, flight tickets or something like this. Two brother travel 24 hours from Islamabad to Koita stopping overnight in one of the uh, area. We arrived, they, they arrived in Quetta and the drought crisis committee's uh, office, they allocated him, them go to the Dalbandin and work there. And other five, six hour drive from Quetta. And that time the temperature was 45, 46 uh, or something like that. They arrived there they, they um, purchased the food and distributed it. There was no Facebook, no website, no email, or nothing at that time in 2000. No telephone. No, I think there no, was no, 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 no. We They arrived back. We just had a news from, I think, from Australia aid 
we are giving you 100,000 Australian dollars. No. As I said, there is no advertisement, there is no website, that we, and we don't have the office in, in, in the Balochistan and Quetta, and our competitor, Oxfam, and other world, there were huge presence there, but they chose Islamic Relief and gave 100,000 Canadian dollars, not Canadian, Australian. Yeah, sorry. Was Again, we went there, had uh, uh, helped the peoples, and subhanallah, in next few, uh, few months time, European Union gave us nearly 600,000 euro to, uh, for the effect victims. As I said, I'm going to repeat it. There was Oxfam, there were many other charities, and we don't have existence in Balochistan at that time. But Allah's, uh, Allah's mother, mother help, help came beyond our imagination, beyond our mean, and beyond our expectation. Jazakallah khair. Now, actually, Muhammad uh, Amran, what year? Rahmatullah. 99. 99. So, Khalid Roy, Nasruddin. Yeah. Which, which is first? Now confusing me. Khalid was first. I know. Yeah. Oh. Kasuji was. Oh. Kasuji first. No, you were before me. Yeah. <laughs> you no, must. You 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 must. Um, but for me, this was my first job coming to Islamic Khalif as a graduate um, in an organization which was not really a full-fledged functional organization. But alhamdulillah, being a part of this, but part of this team and my first manager, Khalid Roy Saab, who used to steal my sandwiches <laughs> and, and, bu and bully me. Um, but um, the organization grew. The organization grew rapidly to, to what it is today. Um, we were an organization without policies, without values or principles or anything written down on paper, but values. actually practiced practiced by individuals. Um, we were 15 or 20 people, I think, when I joined, with job descriptions, but we doing A to Z. Every, everything we were doing, fundraising, uh, collecting clothes, uh, in the warehouse, distributing leaflets, Designing leaflets, printing leaflets, running after. But alhamdulillah, it was an experience. And uh, um, for us to be a part of this great organization in the, in the early years, to see where it is today, um, a lot of these people in this room were basically the foundations and the stepping stones to where we are now. And it's an honor to be here. Thank you. So, uh, 1992, 93, uh, observed the arrival of a handful of great young people. Yeah. Great young people, great young people, okay? And these great young people, about uh, four or five or six. Yeah. Okay. No, no problem. Uh, it was Fadi Aitani in London as a fundraiser. It was Khaled Roy. It was... Uh, Mahmoud Al Hassan, it was Nasruddin Haq Hamid, it was Mustafa Osman, it was who else? Mustafa Osman, Nasruddin Haq Hamid, and Salah Saeed. On the on the on the yeah, on the top on the top level. Apart from this, we have two young volunteers who became the makers of America which was Jangir Malik and uh, Anwar Khan, because I'm born and bred and, and eh, born and grown in, in the backyard of, of, of Birmingham, actually. These three years were the, uh, the, 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 the milestone, the most important milestone in the history of Islamic religion. When you send two young people, like Anwar Khan and Jangir, to a continent called USA with no support, and they can talk about it, 
very soon and you are actually making this exception a deception because we have got uh, Anwar Khan to visit us for the first year after the COVID. Thank you for the other of uh, uh, Anwar for accepting this. But what I'm saying this, an organization which does not know the history will not exist anymore. So which one we can start with? Nasser or Khalid? Uh, you are 1990? 99. Nasser ah. is here. Who's that? And uh, Sultan, what year? Sultan is 94. 94, yeah. So which one? Uh, Khalid or, or Nasser Khalid. 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 So for me, Islamic Relief, the for me, the most important thing has been the fact that it's been a leading organization uh, among Muslim NGOs and, me, you know, maybe even among all NGOs. And one of the principal reasons why it's been a leading organization is primarily because of Dr. Hani, mashallah, because he's always either supported or led innovation. Um, and one of the things I try and tell people who are new to the organization now is that what is controversial today and innovative very soon becomes orthodoxy and mainstream. So for example, in 1990, late 93 or 94, we were the first Muslim NGO to get institutional funding from the British government, which was called the ODA, ODA at the time, Overseas Development Authority, different now. And it was a big deal because it main, made us a mainstream organization, etc. But would you believe this is what happens? You see? <laughs> uh, I've been practicing this speech for years. Have <laughs> 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 you noticed in our countries, right? When somebody gets up to speak on a microphone, always somebody comes and fiddles with the microphone while he's speaking, pulls it up, pulls it down, pulls it side. <laughs> Allah, they rolled up the honey students. Uh, as I was saying, <laughs> this great man. <laughs> what was I saying? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, would you believe that oh, getting funding from the government was controversial at the time, right? I spoke in a couple of mosques, which was quite rare for me, etc. And people were standing up and saying, you are taking money from the kuffar, you are now their slaves, you are this, you are that, the other, right? And there was some internal opposition as well, unsurprisingly. Um, and, and now, obviously, it's orthodoxy. In fact, it's probably too much orthodoxy, yeah. right? You probably have become their slaves. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, Capricorn. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> No, no, but the, to be serious, right, it is really something that, you know, people are working with, with Islamic Relief now need to remember that what is controversial today becomes orthodox. <coughs> and Dr. Hani was always certainly in support of this, but in other ways he was actually leading this in terms of, you know, you wake up one morning and you find out he's in the middle of whatever country or something, and, it's, you know, and we've opened an office there as well. <laughs> the Islamic uh, flag. Yeah, yeah Islamic flag, etc. And, you know, we just have to go with it. Right? <laughs> uh, so, so that is important. Yeah, for ex another example was around 90, there was a big earthquake in El Salvador. That's right. Yeah, uh, <coughs> like around, just before 2000, I think. And the issue, and Cafford asked us for some funds because we had not, you know, we had no presence there, etc. And the XCOM actually rejected it, right, on the grounds of, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, whatever the reasons, yeah. Um, and Dr. Hani actually re with some, some of us lobbied Dr. Hani about this, and he reconvened the XCOM meeting and threatened everybody, and then we got it through. <laughs> <laughs> No, so again, that became part of orthodoxy, and then, you know, some, some, you know, obviously some innovation didn't take off quite as well as it should have. I think the volunteer program could have been much stronger, for example, mm -hmm. the international volunteer program. But maybe the donor community hasn't grown enough with it and stuff like that. Um, you know, and, and also advocacy among Muslim organizations, you know, that is, that's very new for them, etc. And I feel we'd have... A lot more, you know, it'd be, I think it'd be a lot, would have progressed a lot more had Dr. Hani still been around, for example. Because generally, mashallah, yani, 
uh, he's a man of vision and he created an organization of vision, etc. And when an organization actually becomes too institutionalized and static and stale and stuff like that, uh, there's a problem, right? Sometimes you need periods of consolidation. You can't just keep, you know, moving, changing and growing too fast and stuff like that. But, you know, you, you have to keep on the move. And I worry sometimes nowadays between, you know, the, we all know there's so many organizations and it's, you know, each one is pretty similar to the to, to the next. And certainly as, a do, as far as the donors know, stuff like that. So I think we can do a lot of work on Zakat, for example, and make it much more... Uh, right much more precise and much more interesting and much more innovative and stuff like that on Zakat, maybe even Qurbani. For example, our Qurbani program should actually, you know, talk about actually implementing the Sunnah and really caring for the animals when they're killed and stuff like that. Bhatti Saab and I were in Afghanistan, remember with the with the, the here, right? Huh? And we were just wading around in blood and the animals, it was just like, you know, and this is something, you know, these are the little, these are the improvements we should be making and should be leading the, organize, the other organizations because we really always were the leaders and we should be the leaders as a service to the community, you know, not, not to get uh, medals and stuff like that, even though some of us get medals. You know, but bigger, you know, too much time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, and that's it. Uh, alhamdulillah, so we need to keep moving and Allah, you know, Allah bless all of you. لك الله خير ناصر عند أفلاكش عند شكيل شو بنص هايد أنا وري أنا كان يأسك ناصر نيز نيز الكاميرا ما هي كيمن توك ماي بليس أوردي I know many of you talk about memories and good old day times and other things, and uh, I'll let you do that. My personal view, I think, is just also we need to talk about the future. Um, that, alhamdulillah, uh, Dr. Hani as a founder, together with his trustees, and then everyone else did their bit to <coughs> take Islamic leave to where it is. Uh, but I think job is not done. Uh, there's a lot more to do. And alhamdulillah, we have a young generation of leaders. Um, may Allah make it easy for them. Uh, they need to be given space to make mistakes. They need to uh, be given space to innovate. They should not be stuck with the past. I think the past is good as a history, but it should not be the benchmark because we could do even better. We could do things differently. Um, times have changed. 30 odd years. We are not going to do what we did in 1984 or in 1999. I can tell you good old days, what I did, IT, I did this, I did that. Things have moved down. Uh, no, I don't even know what they do with the technology part. The same thing about the social um, aspect of our life. The Muslims, the communities have changed. Um, and Islamic leaf, those days, might have been one of the most or the only key organization that, as a Muslim organization that was leading. It's no longer that, and it's no problem, because the Muslim community is much bigger, the challenges are much bigger, whether it's international relief, whether it's domestic work, whether it's community work, is much bigger than Islamic youth than any other organization. So we have to give space to other organizations to innovate, to, co um, to come up with solutions, and we should not see them as our competitors. Um, we should not see them as a threat. They are complementing our work, even if they are doing international relief or they are doing domestic relief. And I'm saying this, especially once you get out of that, uh, what do you call it, bubble of Islamic relief or belonging to one organization, and you come out and you see, actually the world is much bigger than Islamic relief. <coughs> okay, Islamic relief actually might have been this big, <coughs> but now it is small, because the community has grown, there are a lot of other organizations doing different types of work, some of them doing great work, some of them not doing so great. So it is, I think, to one, to leave the space 
for the new generation to lead the organization in the way they see it. They are new generation, they have their own way of doing it. We know the way we, br we were brought up is not necessarily the same way we bring up our children. Our children don't behave the way we were behaving with our parents. The same way these new leaders have to be given space, okay? They should not be a stick that we used to do in this way and we have to do it, but okay, let them innovate, let them try, let them make mistakes and let them take the organization forward. And the only thing that might remain, I should think, is the values. Mm -hmm. We don't tolerate the values, we don't want to lose the values, but everything else is negotiable, everything else can be tried, okay? And we also give to other spaces, to other organizations, to innovate, even to compete with us, and if, to be honest, maybe I'm an, uh, feel like I'm an outsider, even though always I think I'm Islamic League, if somebody else can do a better job than Islamic League, let's go and support them. Because if the mission is about Islamic League, then we have a problem. Mm -hmm. Because it becomes about me, about my future, about my job, about my history. If it is about the Ummah, doesn't matter who does it. The one who does the best, we sure. support them. Allah 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 as a volunteer, 1988. So, remember the days of the Islamic Youth Games? Yes. First Islamic Youth Games. That was the first big volunteer led event in the Muslim community. Yeah. All of you remember. You should remember that. Yeah. I've seen pictures. And it was incredibly innovative. And at that time, although we were focused on raising the money, the purpose wasn't raising the money. Am I right, Dr. It was about mobilizing the community. And if there's one thing Doc did, he could mobilize people. Right. And that was incredibly inspirational. I think the games lasted for nine years. Am I right, Doctor? Mm -hmm. uh, 97 of the last games. Uh, I think Doc was very upset. But about five or ten years after that, he kept telling us, bring back the games. Because, am I right, Doctor? Because he saw the potential in them. But since then, that spirit of innovation and mobilizing people, that's always lived on Islamic belief. And Doctor, you know, now to this day, he hasn't stopped do doing any of that. Mm. Uh, sometimes we internally in IR, we underestimate the value of IR outside. We are very critical inside in IR about ourselves uh, and the mistakes that we see and the shortcomings that we see. But outside, when we talk to the community, those who know the sector, those who know the charity work, you know, we're, we're a beacon. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we don't appreciate that. Sometimes we think that in other organizations, life is much better, and mm -hmm. everything's more organized, there's no shortcomings. And that's not true. It's not true. You know, the, the shortcomings everywhere. So first thing is always to be grateful, to say Alhamdulillah, uh, for all that's been achieved. And really, we need to continue making dua that in, in our community, in our organization, we have more people like Dr. Shem. And we look at one individual, but we know that organizations and movements do not rely on one individual. They rely on other people following on that lead as well. So, Doctor, I mean, the, the, the community in the UK owes a lot to Doctor. We owe a lot. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and Umma owes a lot as well. We we all know a, a, we, owe we, a lot for the community. We we, we do. We are the creation of the community. And sometimes we underestimate how many people through Doctor Hani and other people in Islam and other people in the Islam group. And we still, in the still till, okay. till now, some old people come into uh, reception. Doctor Hani, where is Doctor Hani? Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Show the picture that, that, that we have. When they don't find him, long is the condition. If they go back, and, uh, yeah. sketch. I sketch. And it's not just UK. I Baba mean, is watching. In, in other countries as well, for example, when Jagir and Agur went to USA, the community still they remembers them as the people started it all. Even to this day, Agur, people must be coming to Jagir. People must remember you and say you guys were there at the very beginning. Uh, so there's you know there's a huge kind of sadka uh, jaria, you know for the for the people who pioneered <coughs> they here in the USA in Europe, and even the pioneers of what, what you know in, each in, in our own way we're also pioneers uh, in, in, in different ways. So may Allah subhanahu wa taala accept all our efforts, no matter how small, no matter how big, and may good come out of everything. Amen. 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 Amen.
Mazur Sorta. Okay, Sultan. He's head of the department. He's head of the department. Sultan, can you start with the story when Dr. Hadi went on holiday? Okay, I'll start at the beginning. It's all nice. I was actually working away in near Bristol and my family was trying to get me back to Birmingham. My dad saw an advert in the Birmingham Evening Mail. Uh, I think it was publicity officer required by Islam Galif. So I applied and Salih Saeed interviewed and I got the job and then we formed a team with myself, mother, uh, uh, Saeed is not here today, uh, four of us. Those things before the well. Um, and it, I think it was the first marketing publicity um, department that we had for Islam Zalif. And right from day one, it just was like uh, we hit the ground running, and there was other offices to support publicity wise, like France. I remember. Rashid, yeah. Rashid yeah. Uh, uh, wanting publicity material in Belgium well, and others. Um, and we had a good partnership with a company called All Trade Printers That's right. and yes. West, Point, yes. West Point Printers. And I remember also uh, something that you pioneered, uh, Kurbani Meat Canning. Because oh, I, I remember uh, I designing the label for the can. Um, so that's something that I think that was the uh, first, yeah. yeah. Um, but I finally just want to say, you know, publicity marketing is all about deadlines mm -hmm. and it's, it's a pressured environment. And we used to do newsletters, mm -hmm. um, so uh, I need a report and so on. So there were times when you were working throughout the day and night because deadlines and deadline. But the thing that actually I felt most Pressure on that was something that Dr. Hani used to do. After after the namaz, Zohar, he used to task everybody with the hadith. <laughs> and I was quite a novice, I didn't know ABC about hadith. <laughs> so he would point to somebody and say, Tomorrow you have to, and the next day is your turn. And then, but it was my turn, I, I felt so nervous because you have to not only learn hadith, but uh, you have to recite it in front of everyone. So I remember being. Um, Really nervous about uh, learning about hadith, um, but yeah, um, it, it, I learned a lot uh, while while I was there for seven years. Because prior to that, my experience was just working on a, like, one magazine, and I've actually brought some samples with me, and I'll show you uh, that some of the things that we produced during the 1990s. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good for the archive. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maz. Same the same 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 Oh, Mashallah, oh, still fresh came from press. Uh, the it's kept it's kept it's kept <laughs> I remember this photograph here. Yeah. Is it Adrian? Yeah. Uh, Adrian. Yeah. Still new. You missed Adrian. Sorry? Sorry? Still very new. Yeah, yeah. 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 This is one of my photographs. Ah, I see. Oh, very good. Oh. Very good. It's a great, good old days. Have you kept in such a condition, mashallah? Yeah, I've kept them in the uh, in oh, portfolio. I take a look. I am. Uh, this was for Rashid in uh, France. Uh, Rashid in France. In Arabic. Mashallah. Uh, but, but it was produced here very good. in Denver. Yeah. We used to have a post office in the warehouse. It was Big Frank and Rashid. Okay, mother. Yeah, okay, Mr. Lapper. Uh, uh, obviously, you said for Sultan, and we all used to work together. And I was, my job was uh, videos, film, and also photographs and purchasing promotional so quotes, promotional items mm -hmm. for the for the European market. Oh, promotional items. And also, sort of, uh, 
hundred days of uh, awareness and, and sort of funding with the promotional items, and also archiving all the photos and the videos that Doc used to bring back and uh, make sure they were accessible and they were found. And uh, and all the purchasing uh, coming out there, we had to purchase something and get all quotes and, uh, for, or try to try to get the best price, the best uh, best product. And it's the first time we had a, a collective department where we had three people working in that department, so we could do everything from the visuals to the the photographs, the videos. So all three of us worked together. It's a wonderful time. It was a mission. It was a it was our responsibility, and uh, for the rest of our lives, we'll do the same thing. And uh, I don't want to break Dr. Uh, Dr. Nibbana's neck, we used to say, but it was wonderful and a uh, great start. And, and it's a lifetime experience, and we loved our work, and it will always all work, uh, whatever we can do socially as well, inshallah. And, and, was, and the whole department thrived for many years, and, and that was it, really. Zakallah. Uh, brother Jangir or Anwar, which one first? Jangir came first. Something to eat. No, 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 no. Here it comes. Because I adjusted the camera. Anwar actually uh, started your. Do you go together? Yeah, Okay. <laughs> I don't have to say much then. <laughs> <laughs> you won't get a chance. Tactical. <laughs> yes, Anwar. Sorry, so, I'm a volunteer from the summer of 1989 at a young Muslim youth camp, Zawasti. So, um, Shortly after that, I remember going to 517 Mosley Road, and there was a mashallah, a little bit grumpy up the Jabbar up there because it was a bit cold because there was only one heater and a big rat. In 517, yeah, yeah, in 517, one rat, one rat, and no, we had one rat. It wasn't you up the Jabbar, it was a, it was a you rat. You saw only one, that woman. <laughs> so he was over there and he was upset. So that's why he's grumpy and it was really cold later on. And that's when Islamically had one office, one room, one office in the whole world. That was um, you know. Then I remember the um, Islamically games that was done at what is now I think Joseph Chamberlain College over there. There about eight hundred people. Uh, we didn't raise much money. It wasn't about raising money. It was about raising love. It was about putting faith in action. And then Alhamdulillah. Um, 93 I became an employee myself and Jahangir and I'm seeing who are the old members of the Ahlul Aflaq Mark was the only member um, no, you didn't come, you weren't invited um, who was Shaquille is somewhere Shaquille, here Shaquille, yeah, Shaquille myself so there was quite a few members of a youth group where Dr. Hani was teaching us in the youth group now as members of that youth group Jahangir joined in the in 1993 before me. I joined in December. And what you had is you had this idea of young Muslims here putting our faith in action. Again, it was not just transactional, raising money, saving people's lives. It was transformational because we did all of that to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there were free people that came that went from Birmingham to America, myself, <coughs> Jahangir, and his wife Shahin. And then when we went to America, um, there was Brother Ahmad al Bandari and his wife Jill Bandari. So we had two sisters, three brothers, two staff members, three volunteers that started Islamic Relief USA and it started from two lads from um, Spark Hill. Not bad for Spark Hill lads. Now a few years later, alhamdulillah, because in Washington, D.C., there was Time Magazine there, and I was asked by some other Muslims to explain to the Dalai Lama, Zakah, Sadaka, and Muslim Civil Society. So for 45 minutes, we were explaining, and he was wonderful, about Zakah and Sadaka. Later on then, I went to the um, White House a few times. I was just in the White House, I think, at the Eid reception on Monday. So several presidents, Dalai Lama, royalty, different things, that all started with a dream here in Birmingham from Spark Hill where we were from that we were trying to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
it was never about the organization. The organization was the vehicle to get to the destination. A couple of things before I hand over to Dan. We should respect the people that came before us, but we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amen. We should respect the people, who, especially about a dozen, who gave their lives in the last 20 years to implement our mission statement. Starting with Baba Zulfikar in Kashmir, as some of you remember, yeah. and the last Baba was in uh, Yemen in 2019, I believe. Was shot in the head with a driver over there. So when we're remembering the past, let's not forget those that gave their ultimate sacrifice and left behind Yatim when they were trying to help other Yatim. Any time when we remember the past. Let us remember all the volunteers who are no longer alive today. Let us remember, I believe Dr. Hani, some of the original volunteers and founders. One of them was a sister from Iraq, I believe. She was, we tried to meet her in Amman, Jordan when we were there. Yes. One of the early ones, yeah. And you said this is one of the sisters that she's not on any publication. But she was there at the beginning. It was never, our organization was never built by one person. It was built by a group of people. But you have sometimes one person that lights the spark to encourage others. And my argument is Islamic Khalif has the responsibility to encourage newer organizations and others. And they have a responsibility to respect the past, but at the same time expect Big Brother to help. And I believe what we've done is very little. The main work is yet to be done, but let's not please forget the volunteers, our amazing supporters, our donors. Some of our colleagues, and many times they threatened to kill us in America. Um, I believe in 97, after Oklahoma, the um, city bombing, they came in, they, 96, sorry. They threatened to burn us alive. Myself, Jahan and Shaheen, we carried on. We have folders of death threats in our office. The only two offices in the world that I'm aware that do not have the Islamic police signage on them are in Alexandria, Virginia, and in um, Idlib, Syria, that I remember. We have um, every year um, security, um, the police come to teach us if someone's coming to kill us with a machine gun, how we're <coughs> going to fight them with staples. This is the training that we get. Virginia is an open carry case you, um, state. You can um, walk around with a gun outside our office. It's all completely legal. So let us not forget, please, that there are our brothers and sisters that we're remembering in Yemen today, in Gaza, in Syria, <coughs> in um, even Subhanallah, in uh, Myanmar. Uh, Myanmar, uh, I'm not going to come to Pakistan later, uh, and many, many other places. Um, since uh, it's time to finish now, let, let, let's go quickly to Afghanistan. I was in Afghanistan in 2001 for the first time because 500 children starved to death in Herat in December 2000. They starved to death or they forced to death. As a result, I believe Abu Maranda Aya Pakistan guys were doing something in Afghanistan Cross -border we and we helped to support it financially. We put the seed money mm -hmm. down yeah. with the amazing work that Aya Pakistan. Uh, Adnan Shima, Skandar, Skandar. So many, so many. But we worked through the Pakistan office and Adnan, uh, uh, Abdul is still here, mashallah. So many, many, many people. So I went over there. Then I went again in 2007 when the Islamic Emirate left and the Islamic Republic came. Then I went again when the Islamic Emirate was back in January. They're still starving. One million children in Afghanistan after all the work we've done. They start to get this year. So there's no opportunity for us to just remember the past and think like it's all done. No, the work is still being done. We are working with the local Islamic group of Afghanistan. They're my heroes. They're working with the imams over there to identify people. And we work with different sects, different ethnicities, everything. Then when refugees from Afghanistan make it to Lesbos, Greece, there's an Islamic relief project there that's done with Hebrew Immigration Aid Service with our Jewish friends between Islamic Relief uh, Worldwide funded by IAUSA and American organization IA to work with Christian lawyers to provide um, legal care. And this is done Abrahamic way of working together. Then when they arrive in America, we're working with our Christian friends, Church World Service. 
and we just got a five million dollar grant from the current um, administration in America to help resettle Afghan refugees. It ain't over yet, it just got started in South Africa. Okay? <laughs> Last month Allah has enabled us to have Dr. Hani as a as a Ustad, as a teacher on a personal level. Um Sorry. Can I just ask whose path at the very back does Kutlatu want to leave? Which car? Yeah, a few cars at the back. I need to write your camera comment. I apologize. It's a black, black car and a silver black Mercedes. Black Mercedes. Okay, I'm buzzing here. Android right on, right on cue. <laughs> this time, the, lo- the most beloved deed is the one that's the most continuous. <laughs> uh, no, sorry, Muhammad. Uh, I don't know. There's, There's, there isn't the words to express the gratitude. It isn't the word. I can't find the words to express the gratitude, uh, the love, the respect that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given us in this, given me or given us in this short life, to be able to work with some of the most amazing, beautiful, blessed people that I've ever come across. Many of us have had difficult times. I grew up with a, a single parent mother. And Dr. Hani was not just a ustad, but he was a father. Allah SWT sent him to us, to our house, to our family, and provided that guidance, support, love, and respect. He pushed us beyond our boundaries, and through his connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he so enabled us to see what tawfiq means when it comes to life in our sort of our humble lives our little lives so he made us believe which is the most important thing in ourselves and our cause and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the way for everything else belief is the most important thing if you lose belief you lose everything else. There's nothing else left. With belief comes the conviction, which then comes the, the barakah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens endless doors from areas and ways that you never, ever, ever, ever imagined. So all we have to say is we say in our short life that we, we thank Allah for the opportunity and the risk Doc took on young people and supported them all the way through and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept you can't leave get my son to the people there <laughs> The future is about to be of the past, the current, and the future. Ah, yes. Liverpool. Yeah. So, Liverpool, you never walk alone. The future. Next year. Next year. Because I'm so small, you have to bring it closer. It's okay. Three years more to go. Are you sure you want to complete four years? It's a good question, actually. This one, Rahim. It, it is an honor to be amongst uh, all the people here. I think you've also got to remember the people who are not here. And, and there's a lot of people here who, um, that were fundamental to the organization. Yeah. There's a lot of people in country offices 
yes. you know, people who fundraise left, right, and centre for us. And then, as as I think Unwood said, some people who passed away uh, in, in in that journey. Yeah. And I, and I don't think you should ever um, forget that. Uh, and it's also strange because, you know, uh, as I was going through my university years and talking to my friends in lovely, leafy Bristol, uh, you know, I, I was dreaming of uh, no being in the city, having my own, you know, um, penthouse somewhere and driving Ferraris and stuff like that. And life takes you on a different pathway. That's right. And the thing about this pathway. As you look back at it, you never regret the path that took you on, uh, because it is something that you you've managed to help people. Meaning, you know, Buddy Sab was talking about some of the projects in in Pakistan. I remember one of the projects. Just the fact that you got something back, we showed that you can be pretty sure because of that project that lady survived and her child survived. And you look back, you think, "Hang on, I have something to do with that." Mm. Or you have. I still remember um, going to the ward of the Eritrea Ethiopia war, and seeing the refugees there, and thinking, "Actually, we've got to do something here." And and that's also, you know, that's we're sometimes in tough places, but that give you're also you're honoured to be in those places. If you know, if you know what I mean, it, you know, some would say, "Oh no, that's really tough. Don't want to be in there." Uh, you know, next week, alhamdulillah, I go into Afghanistan and someone's like, what do you want to go there for? Oh, I, I've, I'm, I've got the opportunity, I'm lucky enough to do that. Um, I started in 95 uh, as a full-time volunteer. Saw the games as somebody who participated in it, played badminton in it. Uh, helped with these clothes banks. I don't know if you remember Nasser as a volunteer. wrote some of the documents uh, around those clothes banks. And then came to Rear Street, uh, and in Rear Street, by that time, I think Khalid Roy had gone on his bike again. Uh, Imran Madden had just left, and it was in essence me and uh, Mustafa Osman, and that 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 was it across the uh, programs. First field visit I did was with Dr. Hani. No, no, he came no. after. After he came after, he left, and then he came back in uh, about six months after. Okay. Dr. Hani told me, you know, Dr. Hani is incredibly driven. I've never been managed by him, line managed, alhamdulillah. Lucky. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but he also, on the other side, the way Allah SWT planned that, is my first field visit was with Dr. Hani. Ah, ah, ah. Yes. Afghanistan, No, Iraq. Iraq, yeah. Iraq, yes. 1996. I'll start with you. Was there one before yeah, he came before that. Oh, uh, so he, had, he must have the same story. 97 we went together. That was 96. Uh, now, two things I, I, I learned in that was, because I look, I was somebody who's come from nice, peaceful Bristol, coming into Birmingham. I learned resilience, because traveling with Dr. Hani, you need a lot of resilience. The other thing I learned was pushing back on Dr. Hani. And he'll remember that, because he just kept you moving you know I'd, I'd sometimes go to bed and at three o'clock in the morning you'd knock on the door and he's bought a japanese guy from downstairs in the you know <laughs> foyer and he's like oh fine talk to the guy like, i don't want to talk to him i want to go to sleep um but he also you know he knows the the one thing with everything me and dr and the one thing he doesn't mess with is when i want breakfast because i made him stand for about an hour when he tried to again take me in the morning right we're going i was like no we're not going we're going to sit and we're going to have breakfast, then we're going to go. No, I'm not having breakfast with you. Okay, no problem. And he stood there behind me for about half an hour while I sat, had my breakfast, did I not? 5,000 dinar. Huh? And then that. But that's what dollar. kept me going for the rest of the day. Yeah. But those things are important because as, as you move through um, uh, life, those things are, um, are lessons. I think I'm just going to end with one, uh, one thing. I think when I look through the sector, and I walk 25 years or whatever. And I'm... three terms I'm going to put there's compliance, there's learning, there's innovation. I think when I started in this sector, a lot of innovation and learning. Mm -hmm. Now it's a sector just dominated by compliance. Mm -hmm. And I think that's does sadden me. Mm -hmm. Because I think the, you know, that it, it's eliminated to some extent. 
the risk, being brave, doing something challenging. Mm -hmm. So I, I do hope that changes, and, and I think that's something that the, you know, I've got a role in that, but it's the future people that are going to be on this journey that have to try and turn that, turn that background to innovation and learning. Zakalakai. 1999? Hassan, you didn't mention that I looked up to your music. 1999? <laughs> Shaquille. Yeah, you did that. Shaquille never came back. After that, I don't know what I'm doing. Which one? Which one? Yes, what one? Which one? Which one? Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. A'udhu billahi min shaitan ar-Rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I first met Dr. Hani uh, in my early 20s. I don't think he'll remember this. I had just become Muslim. And up in Lancashire, I encountered, I encountered an old Muslim who's deeply in debt. Uh, and he saw me and he said, you must help me. I said, how do I help you? And I had some contacts with people in Birmingham. And they said, go and meet Dr. Hani on uh, the Mosley Road. So I approached him as a young 20-year-old, you won't remember, and I said, can you please help this man up in Lancashire? And without questioning, without delving deep, he says, look, there's the check, take it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what is this? I could have been a thief. I thought, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Dr. Hani, I just noticed, was uh, surrounded by paperwork in this church building, I knew he was a doctor, he was doing this part-time, and I marveled then at how someone who was already in a busy career could do this. Well anyway, 13 years later, I was living in Birmingham and I joined the Islamic Relief, and, um, and by hook or by crook I ended up in the emergency department with very little training. Somebody spotted and said, Imran might be able to have a go. So I was parachuted in as a coordinator, and I was just reading that magazine, Chechnya, Kosovo, Afghanistan drought, El Salvador, it all hit me within two or three years. And as I was reading those articles, all that stress returned <laughs> that I remember. Dr. Hani, and the biggest stress was Dr. Hani walking past going, have you written that article yet? <laughs> have you done that proposal yet? Uh, and the biggest word that hit me I found you spoke about resilience. Mm. The, the word that bounces in my head is capacity. And uh, Dr. Hani once said, there is something happening in Palestine. What are you doing? I said, Doctor, we have so many projects. <laughs> he says, do something in Palestine. What is your capacity? <laughs> Not much. Then build capacity. <laughs> and that was it. Uh, what I learned in my 10 years with Islamic Relief uh, was... I think three or four things, leadership, management, teamwork, and service. I learned that there's a difference between a manager and a leader and a team worker. We should all be servants. I primarily, that's what we should all be. And that's, that is what my time in Islamic Relief reinforced to me, that if we are not serving humanity, then, then why are we here? And that really embedded itself deeply, hopefully for the rest of my life. Being a team player, you, you can't be anything in this life if you don't have the humility to recognise, as you said, Nasser, if somebody can do it better, then support them. It's not about you, it's getting the job done and working as a team to get it done. And you need managers who can keep you to deadlines, who can hold you accountable, um, who can demand of you and to support you. You need those managers to keep those structures and discipline. But by Jove, without leaders, without people with vision, you stand still and you suffocate Absolutely. and you go backward. Yeah. And you can find team players everywhere. Everyone can be a team player. Yeah. And many people can be built into being management with going on a few courses. Yeah. But leadership... I'm not so sure you can teach that. You, there's leadership in all of us. But by watching those who are truly gifted with leadership, you can improve. And, and what is the essence of leadership? It's uh, sincerity and it's belief. And 
I have trouble with Dr. Honey as well, uh, Sudan, uh, Africa, and I've witnessed in Dr. Hani and the people he put around him, people who believed in what they were doing, and then after that, shone as leaders. So all I can say is a, a huge thank you to you, Dr. Hani, and to the people around you. You know, I, I didn't realize how grass the, the green, how green the grass was while I was there. Because when you leave a beautiful environment and you work with people who don't have the values and the motivation, you you do harken back to those good old times where you're on a mission and you're part of a team and you are supported by good, effective managers, but above all, you're led by inspirational leaders. I, I hope and pray that Islamic Relief grows to be that role model for the Muslim community because uh, we need that leadership at all times. God bless you, Dr. Hani. God bless all of you. Who is in the... Uh, oh, okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, it's Who is in the... This century? This century? Yeah, yeah. Oh, this term is coming because we need to finish with the, the big leaders here. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few grey hairs, not as many as many of the others, alhamdulillah, because I'm still significantly, significantly younger and uh, of a different generation. And I think the invitation was received. I'm happy to receive the invitation, but I think it was meant for Saleh rather than Salah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Saleh and Salah. <laughs> Salah received it. Salah. Salah said, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Uh, alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Um, I've been at, at Islamic Relief since 2006. Somebody, uh, I think uh, Habib Malik and Jahangir Malik and Mu'ad and a few other brothers made a mistake to employ me. I'm still here, alhamdulillah. And I'm very thankful to them uh, for giving me the opportunity as, a, as a somewhat uh, somebody who wasn't even in university. But they didn't know it at the time. Khair, inshallah. Um, I think my reflection today is um, looking around the room, subhanAllah. Uh, you're hearing a lot about memories and whatever else, and, and what comes to mind actually is you tend to meet this type of gathering in weddings or in janazas uh, or, or subhanAllah uh, in you know real remarkable and, and life-changing moments in, in life. Um, and what actually it teaches you, subhanAllah, and, and comes to my mind is the concept of Silat al rahab which is the keeping of the ties or keeping of the kinship and keeping of the relationships, uh, which despite the fact that many people around the room, subhanAllah, would have had differences, uh, there is always the unity and, and love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through everything that they've been through uh, and through sharing in, in, they may have differed and people will always differ uh, and the best of, of the people in the Sahaba would, would differ, but they'd always be united in, in sharing that same uh, end goal. And this is what, alhamdulillah, we can see today amongst the people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from them all for all of their efforts. Uh, we give a special mention. I was very surprised today to hear of the first uh, staff member of Islamic Qadif, our dear brother Abdul Jabbar, actually retiring in two weeks' time. SubhanAllah, which is a historic moment. Uh, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of our elders here. Uh, and, and those of us who've got to take the the mantle from them and try to continue. Allah forgive us, we're not doing by any means uh, the same level or standard. We will try our best and we will continue, inshallah, the good work that they started. Adnan, then Tufail, then Wasim. Come on, Ali Deen, sit down. Come on, Jabbar. Come on, Amr Amran. Bismillah ar Rahim. Come on, Maz. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Hani, for bringing this blessed gathering together. Um, it's been for me a real honor, a real privilege to be uh, with these wonderful brothers who, um, mashallah, built Islamic Relief to what it is today. Um, we know, mashallah, about Dr. Hani. We hear many times about all of the amazing things Dr. Hani did and uh, the sacrifices he made. But we don't hear as much about the wonderful team, you know, as Afan mentioned as well, there's many people who aren't here in this gathering or were instrumental 
in building and, and growing and uh, enabling Islamic Relief to do some of the things that it has done. And, you know, I came into Islamic Relief 2004. I never had the opportunity and the, the privilege to work directly with Dr. Hani. But, alhamdulillah, brother... Not, not you. <laughs> but I, mashallah, brother... Ask, ask Sultan. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I, I was grateful, mashallah, that I, I managed to, to work under Brother Jangir, who, you know, if we can say, was the student of, of Dr. Hani. And, you know, at the time, alhamdulillah, when I first came into Islamic Relief UK, my brother, brother Aflaq, Brother Hamid Imran, uh, from this gathering, mashallah, inspirational individuals that I learned a great deal from. Um, and... You know, for all of us, I, I think I'm pretty sure I can speak on behalf of all of us. As much as we may feel as though we have done, we worked, whatever, but I think all of us have benefited more. Mm. All of us have become better individuals. All of us have have, be, have learned a great deal through the work and through our experiences with Islamic Relief. And for that, we should. You know, I'm very, very grateful, um, and and I hope and pray that I can continue in whatever capacity sure. I can and ready to stand on the shoulders of the wonderful brothers and sisters who've, who've done amazing work over the past X many years. Um, we hope and we ask for your prayers that you know, Allah SWT enable us to continue to grow and to serve and to help, um, which of course will be upon your deeds as those who are the pioneers and those who, who, who laid the foundations for this wonderful organization. I don't think you can fly high. I'm quick, yeah? Bismillah. No, 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 I can't I can fly high. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I feel a bit starstruck, to be honest. I mean, amongst all these, uh, mashallah, um, legends of Islamic relief, I always say to my team that today we stand on the shoulders of, of giants that helped to build this organization, which has made our life easier. We do, of course, face our own challenges, but alhamdulillah, we have an organization, we have an institution, we have a building, we have, alhamdulillah, IT infrastructure, everything we have. Our life is so easy compared to what you went through. And we're eternally grateful for what you have done for this organization. Uh, when I, when I, I remember in 2005, I got the passion to want to work for, for charity. And the only organization I wanted to work with, well, two organizations, but mainly Samir Khalif. And I was like, I remember I went to Hajj and I was like, Ya Allah, please get me a job in Islamic Khalif or Muslim Aid. Those are the two organizations that were really well known. And in Islamic Khalif, the first person I remember was Brother Imran. I, I, you know, I, I don't know where I saw you, I don't know where it was, but it was, uh, it was some sort of video. And I was inspired by the way that you, you, you spoke in that, that, I can't remember what video it was. Development education, maybe? I don't know what it was. It was, it was, it was, it was I was inspired, mashallah, and I've always remembered you from that, from that time. Alhamdulillah. And, um, That's why I brought him today. Yeah, alhamdulillah, jazakallah khair. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we, we, mashallah, eternally grateful to, to you all for what you've done. Uh, but, but equally, I would also say that you should all be proud of the organization that we have come, become today. Um, and, and, you know, we, we talk about innovation and the, the stifling of, innova of innovation, but we're still innovating out there. We're still doing products and programs that, that others aren't doing. Um, innovative programs like the floating garden projects in in in, in Bangladesh, micro dams, which you know sustainable integrated projects in Mali, in Niger. Nobody nobody's doing these projects. It's Islamic Relief Farm. We're still leading the way there. We're we're we're, we're doing things in, in countries that others are, are struggling to do. In Afghanistan, I was there in December just before Anwar by, and on the on the back of our visits, Alhamdulillah, through showing that we were able to work on the ground. We secured a twenty-two million dollar, twenty-four million, dollars. twenty-four million, succeeded twenty-four million dollar UNDP funding, uh, and and so this is all sadaqa jariya for you brothers and sisters that have gone before us, and and so we just we, we request your du'as to be able to build on the good work that you've done and to do justice to the responsibility that we have today, and it is a huge responsibility, it is a huge responsibility. But one, I, I finish with a, a quick word on Dr. Hani. The first time I met Dr. Hani. It was at a London Mayor's event, and I was a young whippersnapper working for Muslim Aid. And, and I went up to Dr. Han, I said, Doctor, give me some words of wisdom. Mm -hmm. He's, who's this young boy? You know, and, he, and he looked at me, he goes, 
look behind you. And there was a, there was a picture of an orphan. Look, that's your boss, mm -hmm. right? And I never forget those words. And that that sense of servitude, that culture of servitude, still exists today. And that's the one thing I say. I've worked in a number of uh, three organizations, Muslim organizations, Muslim Aid, Orphan Aid, and Islamic Relief. And that sense of servitude is, is what I feel is different, and what sets Islamic Relief apart from other organizations. And that's really from Dr. Hani, a value that he helped to inculcate and still lives today, alhamdulillah. So, Jazakallah khair. I'll have this short. Our chief leader, Brother Wasim. Do I have to say anything now? No, no, you can, you can invent anything. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله صلى الله عليه وسلم بعد عز بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم brothers I wish I could say sisters إن شاء الله next time sisters our hearts إن شاء الله okay جزاك الله خير دكتور هاني and all the brothers for this excellent evening and and sorry I was a bit late and I think I missed a lot because every moment in this sitting ما شاء الله is is a blessing I think all being said in this room I don't want to reinvent but one thing I was looking around and I'm not a game person, Islamic League games. That time I was in Pakistan and maybe studying uh, Rawal Pindi, Kabaddi or cricket or hockey. Uh, but I remember one thing, uh, relay race. I said, what a relay race is where you pass on baton, right? Yeah. So um, to me, it's like a relay race where one athlete is finishing one leg and passing on the baton. Uh, someone trying to uh, so and passing on the baton. So for me, as a CEO of Islamic Relief, and uh, it's, it's something that I got the baton now, and I'm running with it, uh, alhamdulillah. Uh, but what you need to carry this baton all the way through is history. Brother Nasser is not uh, with us now. He said this: you need to keep the history because. It's really important where you can ground yourself as your values, who we are, why we are Islamic Relief, and where we see ourselves. I think that's the vision as CEO of Islamic Relief. Uh, I'm carrying, alhamdulillah. And I believe that this is, this is something that keeping us really alive and getting all the successes, alhamdulillah, in this world. One of my dear brothers said that we always underestimate ourselves is absolutely true. Absolutely true. Where uh, I've been, all the, my peer CEOs, they, they look towards us that great organization, great implementation. CHS, alhamdulillah, uh, Afan, mashallah, led in IPD. When I was IPD director, so Afan probably remember, I said, Afan, we need to get this certification. And we need to get it and we need to work round the clock on this. Alhamdulillah, we got CHS certification, which is the ISO standard in the third sector. And Alhamdulillah, Islamic Relief is the only Islamic faith-based organization. Not only we got one certification, second certification, third certification, but every time, Alhamdulillah, we are improving. Okay. That shows, Alhamdulillah, that standard that we carry, innovation that we are bringing in. And, uh, and Brother Nasser said this, uh, new generation. I don't know, I can call myself new uh, in late 40s and uh, still all the gray hairs. Uh, started my journey when I look back in 2000 with Islamic Relief in Pakistan, uh, where uh, we were doing a camp. Uh, Brother of the Manan just left now. They were, they were having a camp on a roadside in Rawalpindi and Islamabad collecting clothes and food for uh, people who are suffering from terrible famine. Not, I wouldn't call it drought because people were not calling it. It was a famine, literally famine. I was a lecturer, Brother Imran, in a college teaching economics to young students uh, in Rawalpindi. So I did my degree in economics and I started working as a lecturer, teaching economics to sixth form students. Uh, about a year and a half I did this job, I was finding very boring. And one of the Juma prayer, I saw this camp. I said, who oh, these guys are, Islamic Relief, and uh, with this minaret and two minars, and they're collecting uh, uh, duvet, blanket, whatever you want to give. So I asked uh, my teachers there and the students, please fundraise for this organization. Because in Balochistan, people are dying, they are homeless, they are moving from one place to another. They need all these life-saving uh, things that you can collect. But I didn't know that. Uh, Alhamdulillah, after uh, about six, uh, four months or five months, there was a job program officer 
uh, in Quetta, Rajasthan, where the project we talk about, the Canadian funded project, food distribution. Alhamdulillah, I was one of the very junior person on one of the truck to distribute food in Rajasthan uh, in 2000. And uh, 2001, then I was posted in August to set up office in Quetta, uh, where uh, I was very lucky to have our Babaji visiting us. So Babaji came uh, along and yes. So Babaji was not Babaji at that time, 21 years. <laughs> Mashallah, uh, a young lad, 2001. So we went to a place called Haran and Dr. Hani still got a picture, a uh, person with the little moustache, slim guy. It was me next to him uh, standing in office and uh, we were going to inaugurate a uh, hand pump, a water scheme in one of the villages. You remember Dr. Hani? Yes, yes. So Dr. Hani said that uh, we will gather all the people here and we'll make dua. For me, uh, you know, like coming out from a, as a lecturer wearing suit tie every day and uh, then I see that, okay, why is this kind of such, some sort of a religious thing we are going to do or is we going to do? Why he wants to all us, of us gather and, uh, and raise our hands? SubhanAllah, that thing really stuck in my mind 21 years that happened. That Baraka will be gone unless if we start with the name of the creator who gave us this strength to support those people. And thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first of all, for giving us the strength and then make dua for the community where we're doing the water facility. That thing really kept me going. That the baraka you will lose the moment you say, we did it. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped us, gave us this tawfiq to do it. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, we did it. So this first water pump, mashallah, led to, as Brother Vanan talked about it, multi-million euro funding, mashallah, Allah opened many ways. Uh, I spent three years in this region. The temperature once was 54 Celsius in Nukundi. Uh, if you look at the map of Pakistan, Dalbandin and Nukundi, well, Alhamdulillah, uh, mashallah, many others. Uh, we have Brother Umair, he's not with us. He's an Afghanistan country director. He was my boss, Brother Umair, and uh, Brother Adnan Chima, mashallah, another legend. He was the one on the recruitment panel, and uh, he selected me. He said to me, uh, 2017, 2018, he came. Uh, to UK, he was country director of Pakistan at that time, that I did this mistake, that I recruited this person who is your program director now uh, in Birmingham. So Adnan, brother Adnan and mashallah, all the legends uh, were there who really, and also many other names, I'm sorry, I'm not doing justice, there were many other names. So Islamic relief is not as said, one person or 10 person is people all around the world. Yes, sir. But who brought the light, who actually took the baton at that time. Alhamdulillah, our Baba Ji, dear Dr. Hani. May Allah SWT bless you. And uh, in this dunya and akhira, one last thing I will conclude, which I think uh, Brother Tufan said this. I wanted to say it, but Jazakallah, you said this as well. Dr. Hani came back in Quetta. We were sitting on the floor. You remember Dr. Hani? So sit on the floor and eat. So we have office downstairs and we have upstairs uh, our uh, just sleeping on the floor. Alhamdulillah, three years we spent. Brother Yusuf was there, uh, joined us from uh, headquarters, came in and uh, to help us with the Afghan crisis relief program. So, mashallah, he spent time with us. So, Dr. Hani was there and Dr. Hani asked me this question. Who is your employer? <laughs> okay, we are looking at him. I said, you. I said, wrong. Like this, wrong. Your employer is people that we visited. Your employer is that old man in the village, that child who is going to get clean water, that woman who will not need now to go two, three miles to get clean drinking water. Alhamdulillah. These, those were the words at that time by Dr. Hani, from Dr. Hani and this inspiration. Alhamdulillah, I can say this Dr. Hani, that we are keeping this Alhamdulillah alive. Amen. And we are saying this, once Brother Jabbar was in office and Jazakallah uh, Brother Jabbar, you always give me this encouragement and strength. We said in one of the meetings that we are not a 9 to 5 organization. So you remember this conversation we had uh, just before Ramadan in a team meeting that we are not 9 to 5. We are on a mission. We are here to save people's life. lives. Lives. One life matters so much. And we serve, alhamdulillah, 13 million people all around the globe. So this is because of strength, 
and tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, we make dua for you, Dr. Hani, and all for this organization, for all of us, all the brothers and sisters who are not here today, but who really contributed to bring us where we are now. Jazakullah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Brother, Brother Sultan, uh, can you adjust the camera on both of us? Sultan. Alhamdulillah, uh, Rasulullah. I'm sitting next to Sultan. Sultan is the founder of Ithar. Ithar is an organization uh, trying to respond to the plight of the Eritrean refugees globally in Sudan, in Djibouti, in Yemen, in Somalia, in different places. And uh, I'm honored to sit next to him because Islamic Relief started officially as a response for the plight of the Eritrean refugees in 1983. And uh, we owe our uh, credibility, our achievement to two countries. The Eritrean refugees came from Eritrea to Sudan, then Sudan itself. So as Brother Wasim and Brother Kufail were saying, we have to look up at our employers, but we have to look up also at the community who hosted us, who promoted us, who made us to be what we are today. That's why today we have more than one chief guest. One of them is Brother Sultan. For me, a really very, very special day to be with the great brothers in this place, with a great founder who has been established historical charity, I think, in, in this earth. Especially when we're going to look at it from the angle of establishing the Islamic State Foundation. After a great speaker, all the brothers who had been started this journey, Dr. Hani Banna, to sit with them for me is very big one, absolutely. Uh, Dr. Hani for me is a very big example from the day I have been arrived to, to Birmingham. I'm close with him. It's for me uh, not because I'm with him, this is the reality very big uh, example where I can learn from him. Uh, he mentioned about Islam spirit that has been the first uh, uh, appeal of the people of the Eritrean refugee. I hope so, uh, Islam spirit today, they cannot forget the school for the Islam. Secondly, I don't speak about uh, all the brothers have been speaking about, but I will, I would, I will, is this, is, is this for, for me especially, is amazing opportunity before all of you. Secondly, for the all great faces in this place, really you have historical background on this amazing gaining Islam spirit. I would like to remind you in myself the deed we doing, where we are the field, the job we doing, may Allah accept from all of us, from everyone has been involved in this earth with this great job. <coughs> Hadith in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, Ma dama wa Whatever some has been built for the sake of Allah, this is said in a class, will continue. I am not doubt about Islam spirit has been established in this strong foundation for Allah. That's what we can be witness with Dr. Hani Banna and Abdul Jabbar, all the great things. Most of you have been started in, my brother Yang uh, here. In the first journey we've been started, if not that had been built in this foundation, I don't believe it could do.
I don't believe could the, this gene has come to this level. If charity has been the first income to entrustance, and it starts with the person who has been contributed to personal life. When I arrived to Birmingham, I know Dr. Hani Banna where the flat he would rent, where he would be living. At the same time, I know the people who have been employed through Dr. Hani Banna in Islam security. I saw them where they live in which center of the flat house. And the same in another part, if it doesn't build that for Allah, it could not come any result from charity of state. I trust and I believe I am witness what I can see. But at the same time, I would love to remind you, my dear brother, and myself, before of you, to imagine Yom al Qiyamah. The three, the three people, it is going to start from the Jahan. Three people, it is going to start from the Jahan. If you imagine who those people, the one who has been established charity, who has been collecting money from the people and distributing and delivering the money to the people in need. No. Think about these three people, and I will end it with that. The first one is the one who memorized the Holy Quran with beautiful voice. When he read Quran, he read Jama'ah, the people begin crying after him. They been motivated about his voice. He come in front of Allah and stand face to face to Allah, not to in front of Dr. Haji Banna or Wasim or my brother Jang uh, here or whoever of the person who did the section of group or the button. When you meet your Lord face to face, you say to Allah, Oh Allah, I have more than the Holy Quran for the hype of you. So imagine <coughs> to say to you, Allah, you are big life. You have more than the Holy Quran for me. You have more than only to say to you, you have beautiful voice. And they say to you, you don't have with me, with me space to go to the hellfire. Another one is a very wealthy person, not the person who collect money from the people in appear in TV in mosque, like my lovely brother Dr. Hadi Banna, myself, all of us have been collecting money from the people. But the person Allah blessing with the wealth, rich man, multi-millionaire, he have everything. He was been given money, building school, building masjid, building wells, sponsored orphan. He come to Allah face to face. What about you? You swallow. You give me the money, wealth. I've been doing this and this and this. I've been, I was been doing this for you. And imagine Allah said to you, you have big life. You have done it that only to say to you, you are very generous. And they say to you, you don't have space to go to the hellfire. The third one is the one who went to the land of the jihad. He become shaheed in the land of the jihad. He died there. They say to his wife, the wife of Mujahid. The children, they said to him, the children of the Mujahid. He made Allah Azzawajal face with him al Qiyamah. Oh Allah, I want you to the land of the Jihad. I fight up to being killed in the land of the Jihad. Why? For the sake of you to make the deen la ilaha illallah beautiful. And kazzab. You have been fighting to say to you, you are the strong, and they say to you, strong fighter, they say to you, you don't have space to go to the hell. The three people going to be such Jahannam with them. So myself, all of us, where we will be if we, when we stand up in front of Allah, if we don't have the sincerity of what we do is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah Azza wa make us from those people. Amen. And every deed we have been done to be accepted in front of Allah Azza wa When we come in front of Allah al Qiyamah, to say to Allah, Oh Allah, this was for you. And to accept from me, from my level of the Taliban, from all of you, inshallah. Yeah. It's really for me, it's an amazing opportunity to be with a great man, a very humble person, Taliban. I think you have been living with him more than me. I've been with him since 1920, around about 15, 20, something like that. It's really, uh, you know him more than me.
<laughs> with this alhamdulillah. May Allah Azza make him better and all of us what we can do. Okay. And extend in his lifetime with the good deed and complete his journey with the good mother. Amen. And thank you so much, Dr. Amin, for giving me this opportunity to meet you. May Allah Azza bless you and give you the, the long life and good end. And share all the good with the children, your children and your children. Those all of them, your children. And, uh, and congratulations to you, Dr. Hanbanna. All this journey, this job is in your skin up to your mother. Inshallah, I'll be able to get some good. Zakum. Zakum. To end, two things. Brother Sultan had a big uh, medical problem four years, five years ago. What? Nine years now. He was between life and death. Was it cancer? No, I had throat cancer. Throat cancer. And the doctor came to him and to his daughter, one of my daughters, said, Alas, forget about your father, he is dying. <coughs> what happened? And this is your work. And this is what you are standing for. Some of his brothers called the people in the camp in Sudan. Mugargur or no? Mugargur told them Sultan is dying. Sultan, and this is a true story. The value of the work that each and every one of you is doing. Sultan is dying. Please pray for him. The whole camp stood up from the morning till after Maghrib. Praying for somebody who are nearly semi comatose. His wife was crying. His daughter was crying. But his daughter believed that Allah will give him long life. Next day he was a different man. And this is the dua of our masters. And this is the dua of our employers. And this is the dua of the people who will claim that we are their champions. This man can speak about it. It's a living story. Death, dua, and the acceptance. A dua from the people who it means qadr, Allah will change the qadr for the people who make the dua. And this is a true living story for the value of the work that each and every one of us here is doing. Don't ever underestimate the dua of miskin, the dua of yatim, the dua of the widow, the dua of the oppressed, the dua of the traveler, the dua of the fasting, the dua of the imprisoned. They have no barrier. There is no barrier between them and Allah. And Allah will swiftly respond to them and the living example is his good health after he was between life and death. The second story happened to us when the prayer, the rain prayer, it happened many times and it rained. One time was in Niger. One time I was in Mandera, and one time was in China. In China was Mustafa Osman and myself. And wanted to do the prayer. Prayer with a Buddhist. He said, I have no wudu. He said, don't worry, let us make just dua. The Chinese, what we, you know what we told them? This was in 2001. I think July or August 2000. Just people, huh? you and the, all of you, boys well, raise your hand to Dr. The, Sky the said, Amin. We started to, to give them a lesson to how to say Amin. Buddhist. Amin, Amin. Mustafa, make the dua. Within 10 minutes or 15 minutes, for the first time of 10 years of drought in this region, the rain came. And our program was cancelled. And the Chinese told them, please, let us go back to the hotel. I said, no, no, we are happy. I said, you are happy, but we are wet. Please, we need to go. And 
The year after that, okay, we had a water program to lift the water from the river to the top of the mountain to these villages. And it became all green because of the dua. And those people in the village, you know what they said? We'll remember you. Because when you came, rain falls. Came. And this is you. It's not an individual. It's not a sheikh. It is your hearts. It is your belief. It is your submission. No matter how much the power of zulm stand again the weakness of justice. But zulm will never be victorious. Justice will come back again. And the haq will come back again. And because the haq is the name of al haq Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you for letting us to celebrate a second day within two weeks now. Two weeks. <laughs> Yeah. Today was a community Eid. The first Eid I celebrated was Jangir in his mosque. In, uh, where is this? The, the elite mosque. <laughs> <laughs> and they were talking about legacies, the legs, and all this kind of high heeled yeah. people in, in Saudi Arabia, inshallah. Jazakum Allah khair. May Allah bless you. We always will be celebrating Eid every day because we achieve. A different milestone every day. Inshallah. You will do that. The third Anwar? Inshallah. Maz? Inshallah. Khalid? All of you. Inshallah. Thank Inshallah. you for coming. Thank you. Thank you.